I thought that uh, I was very uh, pleased with how my squad responded after a disappointing loss in Athens. Um, <clears throat> listen, we just played a team that potentially could be in the Final Four, and I thought that we gave them the, our best punch, you know, and uh, wish a couple things could have gone better in the third quarter, but when you play in a team like that, you have to have a, your best game, and uh, you probably with no mistakes, and uh, we weren't able to do that uh, <clears throat> when we needed to. Uh, uh, overall, I thought we did our university proud. I mean, no, I'm not using it as a, um, what you call it, those, uh, the wins that make you feel good. Like it wasn't a win, we still lost. The moral victory, there you go. The moral victory, it's not that, it's just the step in the right direction, you know. Um, I remember when Vic was in year one. So uh, the fact that we were able to do that today uh, gives us something to build on. Being able to come out as physical as you guys did, it seems like that was pretty present in the game plan. Mm -hmm. What did you see about this team that made you want to come out and attack the way you did? I mean, just pride. I think uh, I said this in Starkville, and I meant it. I think a rivalry is not about hate. It's about your love for your university, and it's about pride. And um, <clears throat> I've been a part of many rivalries before, and I just believe that the records doesn't matter. You know, someone comes in your gym to compete, you, um, you got to give them a game. And, and right before the game, I changed our defense, and I decided to go man. Um, <clears throat> and that's why we came out to the court late to warm up because I had to make an adjustment and I just really appreciate the, the girls for trusting me and giving me a chance to execute the game plan as much as possible. What caused you to make that adjustment? Uh, well, we, what we wanted to do, we, we felt like they, I mean, everybody knows that they're not good perimeter shooters. They don't have a lot of them. So we wanted to pack the paint. And uh, we tried to do it in our zone because our team has almost forced me to play zone the whole year. Like, I'm not a zone team. I play both man and zone. Um, that's what they're confident in and comfortable in. Uh, but we kept getting, we kept losing um, the Howard kid in the backside. So, I mean, she had 21 points, but she really had to earn them, you know? And uh, we kept losing her and I just, it didn't sit well. And so at pregame, I just said, listen, guys, I'm going to change the defense. I need you guys to come early and uh, let us talk about it. And I thought that it gave us a chance, and I thought for the most part it did. Thoughts on, you know, obviously you were able to kind of neutralize McCowan in the yeah. second half, two points, two boards, after she kind of had a big second yeah. quarter. Yeah. Was that part of the adjustments as well? I mean, what'd you yeah, see? I mean, first of all, she is a phenomenal player. I mean, I don't know that there's any anybody more dominant than her in the league, that's for certain. Uh, so for us to do that is definitely something that we're proud of. And so what we wanted to do was keep her uh, from deep ceiling uh, because once she gets two feet in the paint, it's almost hard to stop her. And that's another reason, Parrish, I went with the man because when you're in zone, the way we play our zone, we can't lock in on her as much as we want. So I decided to go with our man defense so that it will give us an opportunity to always have a body on her. There were times when LaCaris was on the floor that she was bringing the ball up as mm -hmm. a way to pull McCowan out of yeah. the paint. How effective do you think that strategy was and when did you kind of come up with that? Um, we probably should have done it more down there. You know, um, LaCaris thinks she's a point guard anyway. So, I mean, she was definitely in her element. Um, I called a play one time and she just uh, did an audible and did her own thing. Uh, so she, you know, we we wanted to give Mimi some breaks. You know, every night, guys, Mimi has been going up against senior point guards. And so we definitely did try to share the wealth and um, have different people bring, it up, bring the ball up. And hopefully we can utilize that later if we ever run into another defensive pressure team. You've seen State twice now, and mm -hmm. you've seen South Carolina. And what have you kind of learned from three games against schools like that, programs yeah. like that, and just how it takes to compete in the SEC to build a program? Yeah, well, <clears throat> according to those coaches, I'm, I'm barking up the right tree. So uh, it takes toughness. It takes commitment from your administration, which obviously I have. Uh, it takes commitment from fans. 
You know, it, it, it takes players that want to come and do something special and be a part of something special and believe, you know. If McCowan didn't go to Mississippi State, where would they be? If if Asia Wilson didn't go to South Carolina, where where would they be? You know, I'm, I'm anxiously waiting t for our kid to come in and say, you know what, I want to put Ole Miss back on the map. Um, and what I've learned about the SEC, it's just the most physical league in the country. Night in and night out, uh, you have to be ready for a fight. And, um, and that's why teams go so deep in the – NCAA tournament because they can endure, you know, games after games after games because they get it every night. You talked about commitment for fans. What do you think it's going to take to get more Rebel fans in the building, especially in a rivalry game mm -hmm. like this so we don't have to hear Maroon yeah. right at the end of that game? Yeah, I mean, first of all, <clears throat> anytime you have a top 10 team, they travel. I mean, in women's basketball, I mean, most of them. You know, Louisville had 17,000 people. When we went to South Carolina, there were 14,000 people. Winning matters. Winning does that. You know, uh, in talking with Vic, his first two years, no one came to the games. And now he has buses coming, you know. So it just takes time and it takes patience. And, you know, it doesn't – did they say maroon and white? I didn't hear that. I heard blue and, and red. So – Maybe I was locked in in our fans, and I just appreciate them coming and supporting us. And I can assure you that as we continue to build the program, the fan base will continue to build. I mean, you just can't have one without the other, you know. So you're not going to hear me go on a tangent about we need more fans. No, they want a product. And I thought tonight everybody that came, um, if we had a lot more games, would come back. And that is what it's about, you know, when you're building. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.